like sonic light cutting through the darkness. Listening to this track, it's guaranteed to take you to a higher plane. I mean, it's been called one of the greatest guitar songs ever written, and it contains one of the greatest solos ever played. It came about in an instinctive moment. After this, Virtuoso picked up his guitar and then everything just started to flow. But amazingly, it would sit on the shelf for years before it ever made it to record. In this episode, it's awesome. I sit down with the legendary guitar hero himself and discover the origin story of one of the most powerful and inspirational rockers of all time. Oh yeah, and he also tells us about losing to his son when they played it on Guitar Hero. It's a good one, it's coming up. Hey music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you used to draw you know, your favorite band's logos on your binders or your trapper keepers growing up, you're gonna dig this channel. Make sure that you subscribe below right now, click the bell, all that good stuff. And also, check us out on Patreon, you get more content there. And that helps us to keep it a daily channel and get more interviews. So I'm really excited to bring you another episode from our series, Revelations. You know, this is where featured artists reveal rare and amazing stories about their biggest songs and albums, fascinating insights about their career, stuff you won't find anywhere else. On this installment of Revelations, I get to sit down with legendary guitar virtuoso Steve Vai to talk about his 1990 masterwork, For the Love of God, from his amazing album, Passion and Warfare. As many of you likely know, Passion and Warfare was written based on a series of dream sequences that Vi had. You know, Steve Vi was doing a lot of reading at the time, including reading about lucid dreams or becoming conscious in your dream state. And as he started to experiment with his sleep patterns, he got the results that he was looking for. He became vividly aware of what was happening in his dreams. Now, sketches and concepts for the album started as early as 1982, but then they were shelved after he joined David Lee Roth. But even during his time with Roth, the, the concepts for Passion and Warfare, they were bubbling over. Although he enjoyed collaborating with Diamond Dave, Steve Vai had started to move in different directions, you know, feeling like there was this whole other world of music for him to explore. Steve parted ways with uh, Diamond Dave in 1989, of course. And then after Roth, Vai was determined to finish his nearly decade old record. This happened at the same time that he was completing the guitar parts for the White Snake record, A Slip of the Tongue. And then he was touring with the band. Now, Passion of Warfare finally came out on May 22nd, 1990. And when it came out, there were a lot of people wondering uh, what it was exactly. It wasn't a conventional guitar record, if there is such a thing. It was not genre specific. I mean, Steve Vai summed it up as Jimi Hendrix meets Jesus Christ at a party that Ben heard for Mel Blanc. Pretty, pretty literal there. Really, he had no expectations for the album, but he was completely open to the creative muse. It was liberating, is what he said. When you're completely engrossed in something that feels natural to you, there's no compromising. Compromising means that there's something else that you're fighting against, and there was none of that. It was just pure creative freedom and joy. And that's what I felt flowing through me at the time. That's what he said. I mean, the music on Passion of Warfare, it just flowed. It was nothing but natural. <laughs> Coming up, Steve goes deep on For the Love of God, plus some other solo tracks from the album. It's great personal insight, including the funny story about his son beating him on Guitar Hero. You gotta check this out. As we go into this interview, I do wanna thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses I always jam. If you or your loved ones are in the market for a new pair of glasses or sunglasses or frames, I'm telling you, Zenny's your best choice. You design your own frames, you just put in your prescription, and voila, they just deliver them right to your door. Check it out at zenny.com or download the app. Here's Steve Vai with the story. 
For the love of God just blows the mind. I had read that you had fasted for 10 days. Tell me about that experience. Yeah. Well, I wrote it many, many years before yeah. that. It was one of those uh, instinctual moments where I just picked up the guitar and sang a melody mm -hmm. and played the chords and it just came. And I just captured it and put it on the shelf for years. Yeah. And it was always, you know, whispering, finish me, finish me, you know? Yeah. So then for Passion and Warfare, I, I decided to, you know, break it out. And I had the, the whole vision for the, the song and I wanted it to be melodic, intense, powerful. Uh, when I was a kid, I always envisioned what my desire was to be the best performer I could be and to make it look as though there's no limitations in what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, like everything looks elegant and it flows uh, beautifully and it's uplifting and it's yeah. powerful. Because there are some people that really derive great benefit from that. You know, they yeah. really enjoy seeing that in a performer. And I don't know why, but that's just what I always wanted to do. And that's what I'm doing oh, to yeah. the best of my ability. It continues to evolve. But with For the Love of God, when I recorded it, at the time, when I was in my mid-20s and stuff, mm -hmm. I had discovered this bookstore in Hollywood called The Bodhi Tree. And it was like this metaphysical bookstore that had everything in it from all the world's religions, the spirituality, UFOs, numerology, the pyramids, everything, you know, yeah. witchcraft, all this crazy stuff. And I just absorbed as much as I could. And one of the books yeah. that I was reading was uh, called The Miracle of Fasting. So I was trying all sorts of things, really getting, I was an extremist, you know. And I started fasting like once a week, you know, because there's a lot of health benefits yeah. you can get from it and fasting for 10 days a couple of times a year. And I happened to have been on a, that 10 day fast when I was recording the guitar part. So I was in the middle of it, like fourth or fifth day, uh, when I recorded the guitar part. Gosh. Yeah. Well, in that performance on YouTube where you're playing with uh, Holland Met and it's got you know, 25 million views or whatever, but that is just incredible. Thank you. Guitar World and so many magazines call it one of the best guitar songs, best solo. Guitar Hero 3, too, is on yeah, there. Yeah. You know? It's on there, yeah. What's funny about that is I played that game with my kids, yeah. that song, and they just kicked my ass, man. <laughs> <They kicked. laughs> and I'm like, no, wait a minute, no, I wrote this. <laughs> yeah. My perspective of my past is really... There's so much gratitude. I can't, when I look back, I can't even believe how everything just unfolded so perf beautifully for me, really. Uh, I never really felt like I struggled in the music business, so to speak. But it didn't mean I didn't have struggles in life. Psychological struggles that you have in your head that may not even be based on events that s seem real, you know? Uh huh. But there's great value in your suffering because through it, you have an opportunity to man up, so to speak. And when I say man up, I mean cut through the, the crap in your head and start finding yourself. And deep suffering can do that. So the thing I'm, I'm, one of the things I'm most grateful for is the hard times, the hard psychological times, because that's how you gain independence. That's how you find strength. Do you know what I mean? That's how you find a new plateau to view the world from. So I guess the moral of that story is if you're going through hard mental suffering right now, at some point you'll see what a great aid it can be. It can be a gift. It can be a gift because if it gets really bad, you're, you're forced to shift your perspective. And all mental suffering is, is just thought, bad thoughts in your head. Yeah. That's it. It's uh, the quality of the thoughts in your head. They're repetitive and they're negative. And as a result, you can go into a very dark place. Mm -hmm. And then it can get so difficult that you start looking for light. And the light is really just the realization that your mental suffering is just thoughts in your head, unnecessary thoughts. 
Well, your music, Steve, thank you so much for your music, because first of all, it's always been to me an amazing representation of joy, suffering, but also spirituality. There's some darkness there, but the light always shines through, and that's that that joy in your music. So thank you so much. Well, I wish I could take credit for it, but uh, thank you. (laughs) When Passion and Warfare actually came out, there was a lot of ears on it to see what what is he going to do? What is this? You know, and it was a surprise, I think, too, because it wasn't a conventional kind of an instrumental guitar record, if there even is one. But it was not genre specific. I love the backstories and I love how you really committed to what you wanted to do with that. You're uncompromising in your vision. You knew what you wanted. And even when Capital. I love how, because it, it changed from Don Grierson to oh, you know, really did your Joe homework. Smith, yeah. Wow. To I remember Potts, all that right? stuff. I'm yeah. impressed. Oh, thank you. But you said no. For me, when I heard that album when I was a kid, I mean, 1990, right before grunge hit, when I heard that, I'd never listened to instrumental music per se. Yeah. But it followed you because, of course, you were the guitarist for David Lee Roth. I was a Van Halen fan in Yeah, you had like the typical uh, ears. Exactly. That were, yeah. And so when I listened to it, I was like, where's the singing? And it like kicked open some kind of a, a trap door in my brain. We're mm-hmm. like, what is, yeah. what is this? Nice analogy. And, and it started to help me to understand what music could be, mm-hmm. the possibilities. Mm-hmm. So you talk about it as started out as dream sequences and yeah. color and how did you see the music and how did that come together? Tell me about that. Well, you know, um, it, it's interesting because when you use words like non-compromising, it almost seems as if you had to put effort into doing it a particular way. But when you're completely engrossed in something that feels totally natural to you, there's no, there's no compromising, because uh, compromising means that there's something else that you're fighting against, in a yeah. sense. And there was none of that. It was pure creative freedom and joy. And that's what was flow- I felt flowing through me at the time. And again, I had no expectations. As a matter of fact, there were people saying, what are you doing, this record? You should be doing this because Mm -hmm. this is what people know you for and this is what you're famous at and this is where all the big arenas after skyscraper i mean yeah such a huge double platinum triple platinum album and yeah and white snake and all that and sure that was uh, someplace in the back of my head it was a concern but the desire to for creative um freedom was just greater that's all it's Mm -hmm. it 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 eclipsed the fear the insecurity do you know what i mean because it was so liberating it was so enjoyable and any you know people do it whenever you're doing something that you're really enjoying everything is flowing you know right. everything it feels natural and things come and you you look at them and you say yes or no it there's there's no it's just very easy and flowing you know that's how that record came so that kind of music that was on that's on passion and warfare just was what was natural really natural to me at the time so it was easy. Well, I love how you summed it up as party Jimi that, Hendrix uh, yeah. meets Jesus Christ at a party that Ben Hare threw for um, Mel Blanc. For Mel Mel Blanc. Blanc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's a, that's a great description of it. Because when you get to like the animal, which is kind of a lust, and yeah. you get to answers, uh, the joy of that, and sisters, and and love secrets. I mean, yeah. talk about complexity. Yeah. Let's talk about that one for a minute because mm, thank you. Yeah. the baby crying and the way that it's like this deep spiritual longing. How did yeah. that come about? Well, uh, you had mentioned before that Passion and Warfare was based on some dream sequences. <laughs> one of the things um, I was reading about that was very interesting to me was just becoming conscious in the dream state having having vivid dreams and so you know like anything there's books written on it you know yeah, yeah. and there's things so i started to experiment certain ways of sleep, sleep patterns and certain you know you can even eat certain foods or something like that and um i got results uh which really 
were just more vivid awareness in dreams, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it came and went, you know, I don't really focus on that these kind days. Kind of like that moment right before you're about to fall asleep, but that yeah. moment that's in there where you're still a little bit, I mean, yeah. you've described it and I love yeah. the description. And then sometimes what happens is, you know, your dreams are foggy and weird sometimes and mm -hmm. there's all these analogies going on that digress into, you know, and, and uh, so I was writing everything down, but I did have this several times. I've had this uh, really profound kind of dream experience, and it always happened at the end before I woke, which is really the only time you remember a dream is when you right. wake up in it. But this was something different. It was this intense sound that I, it was, and I had read of other people experiencing something similar. So I know I'm not alone. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it, uh, the only way to explain it was, you know, picture yourself traveling through s space, so to speak, whatever, at this incredible speed and everything's just, oh, and yeah. the sound is like thousands of instruments all out of tune, but celestial perfectly. Celestial, it was a celestial orchestra and it, was, it wasn't like it was loud. It was more than loud. It was yeah. everything and it was, all Incredibly powerful. And I woke up, and I remember it was like I, was, I felt like I slammed down into the bed. Mm -hmm. And I woke up and I just was, um, was stunned. And that music had always been in there. And when I started to work on Love Secrets, that was the song that I used to try to depict the music I was hearing. It falls so, so far short, you know, because when you're sleeping, it's a non-physical dimension, you right. know, and when you're dreaming and stuff, but we're limited in the physical, you know, oh, to yeah. a degree. So it, it, I started working on that song and I only had really one criteria and it was just not to think, just instinctually move. So things would just come up and it was almost like automatic writing. Right. But... It also contains a tremendous amount of musical understanding. Because if you listen to the chord structures and every note, it's composed in a way so that things are shifting, but it's got that rapid. It does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's one of my, I mean, it's not an uncommon question that artists get. If you were going to pick one song that was right. really depictive of you, that's it. Love Secrets is it. Thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Steve Vai and the spiritually enlightening rocker. For the love of God, just an incredible song. What are your memories of the song? If you haven't heard it, check it out. You got to hear it. Let us know in the comments below. Let's have a good discussion. If you enjoy our content, make sure to subscribe below, you know, so you never miss out on our daily videos. We would love to have you as part of this community. Until next time, three chords and the truth.